Uh, I don't think you all have received any clues as to what it is. Um, so I think you're pretty well in the open. I think the only thing that you've kind of heard was when Magbell like, walked away. I think she had said its name um, and said, I'll go get the master. I'll go get Trepson. Um, so I think that's kind of all you have right now is a name for it. Um, but you all certainly do have a moment to react. Um, it seems to have essentially announced itself at the front gate. So if you all have thoughts in mind, you can certainly, uh, react in this situation. You're still in that same kind of sitting room entrance hall. Uh, with the stairs, like, to the north of you, and then that branches out, and then there's two hallways in each side of the house, and you're basically at that front door. Uh, not the front gate, it's, like, outside of the front doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's essentially a door sill, doorway in between you and, like, the glass of that front entry. Uh, it's essentially, like, blinded, so there's, like, light coming in that, like, gives, like, the glow off of, like, white blinds. Um, you're not necessarily able to look out and see. Magbell left through one of the, like, back halls, um, minutes ago. That was kind of the initial time that you all had a chance to react where she, like, pieced the moment things seemed, um, uh, like, uncomfortable. Uh, you all have a moment to react. You don't necessarily have a moment to strategize. So this kind of time here is essentially that idea that perhaps you discuss certain things like around campfires. Um, but yeah, you could definitely take your kind of reaction as peeping out uh, through the blind in front of you. So Doc and Verthus can do a perception. Uh, Arlyle and Vicious. Um, there's some smaller chairs. There's nothing like especially large that you can block the doors with, but. And then Sarad, Hadar, how are you reacting to things? Not specifically, it's just with the input, what are you doing in this instant of this thing has announced itself and nothing has yet happened. My point is not to say that it's like a specific kind of action, this or that, but it's definitely not multiple seconds so much as it's like, what is your initial thought? What are you doing? And then, Sarad, what are you thinking? Are you just kind of, like, holding on this thought? So, what is that? Second level to do Bless on 6, or... Third level? Alright, word. All right. As Verthus and Doc uh, 
move across, move the blinds a little bit out of the way, each of them looking out a different window. You see a large creature standing probably about 12 or so feet tall. It's a uh, massive, probably weighs almost a thousand pounds. It has four arms, two legs, and a massive pointy looking face with just a big old nose about the half the size of the creature itself. Its flesh is kind of a pale white on the underbelly and it, it's standing up on like hind legs. Uh, and then it has like a hue of green across part of its flesh as well as it seems to have moss growing from its hair, maybe moss on top of its head, uh, just kind of like traipsing down its back. Uh, it has its shoulders and its head though are very mossy, uh, just as like, like your initial, initial view of them. And then and it's, it's going, going to say, It's Trapson! Who are you? Right, you didn't say your name with Hadar? Or did you say your name? Alright, yep. So he responds, It's Trapson! Who are you? Again, uh, so uh, well, I catch it. Um, I'm Hader. A pleasure to meet you. <laughs> you look like someone who likes food. Pauses for a moment, looking kind of quizzically forward. Hadar. It'll be a pleasure to fight you, Hadar. Come, join me in combat. We can partake in food later. All new recruits must fight me. Yeah, but, oh, but, you, uh, but, but you say that we get food afterwards? Well, <laughs> We're in. The kobolds are constantly cooking. There's never a shortage of food. Come and take your pummeling. Fight me. So is anyone else doing something, or should I go ahead with the fight? Well, actually, that was super useful. Now, you know, it, it doesn't feel like we're getting ready to kill each other? Uh, the, the whole thing of come out and fight me thing sort of sounded a bit like he probably wants to fight us, I'm gonna guess. It seems relatively straightforward. And he thinks we're new recruits, that's great. So after a moment well you see as this thing which its head is about half the size of the doorway kind of like pops open into the door and it like slowly creaks the door open and it's sticking its head inside. And it's like, are you coming out to fight or not? I'm not allowed inside. Uh, we should probably ask uh, the owner if it's good to fight him. I mean, I'm into eating, so I, I, I want to fight him first. When I say or not, there's not actually a choice. All new recruits have to fight. You're not welcome if you can't fight. We're going to war! Are you not ready for war? And it like raises one of its arms into the actual room. And it's approximately the size of uh, probably like Doc's whole body. Um, so now that we've seen this and gotten the description and everything, do we get an idea as to what race this thing is? Like, does it appear to be, like, lizard-like with forearms? Or is it, like, mammal? Mammalian? Uh, definitely would be a little bit more humanoid. Do either an intelligence or a nature check. 
I guess medicine too, if you had medicine proficiency. Uh, none of those I'm proficient in. I would have it. <laughs> Um, it seems a little bit different than the creatures that you fought in the mountains of the, um, oh, damn, it was like the Deadlands or something, the undead area north of Baldur's Gate, where you all fought those flying women, uh, and there were the two massive creatures that you all fought there as well, um, very similar to giants. Uh, okay, so that those were trolls we fought back then, so we get some kind of inclination that it's like troll or giant-like in nature? Essentially, yes. Okay, okay, cool, cool, I gotcha. Uh, uh, so, oh, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Uh, Doc's gonna take this opportunity to light a cigarette, uh, and he'll say to the crew, uh, I'm not gonna make this mistake again, but... Uh, been a while since I had a good pummelin. I think I'll oblige, uh, and I will uh, start to move towards the door to go outside. I'm, I'm sticking to dog right there. So, Captain starts to like back out, kind of like squeezing his head through. He like breaks part of the door sill. He's like, "Damn it! House is gonna get pissed." I'm gonna fight! The scrawny one first. Excellent. Careful, this guy's strong. My, my door bracing did absolutely nothing against him, gently opening it to speak to us. I'll just walk outside. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, is this like single combat? He's, he's just in the scrawny one by himself? I'm like, hmm. So everybody's pretty much walking outside at that point? Yeah. Sure. Uh, um, what are we being recruited for? Does anyone know? I think the cult. That's Are my you guess. Asking this out loud. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, no. but I, I, I always forget what he's doing. So, don't mind you. Fighting. But she's good for fighting. Show me what you've got. He's kind of like standing there with his like arms out. Each one's like kind of pointed out, uh, like almost like it's flexing, but like on a level plane to like where that shoulder is. So he's got like two arms like above each other, almost like a uh, pincer crab, um, like would walk across the ground, but they're just like kind of like standing out in front of it a little bit. Have none of you what it takes? Come at me. Come. Well, Doc, you want to do this or should I do it? All right, so um, I guess I'm going to kind of like circle around a little bit uh, as he's like peacocking on us and uh, just sort of see like what weapons does he have or anything. And then I want to kill a total of one minute since we started talking to him. Because I want to use the Know Your Enemy uh, feature on him. Uh, what are you trying to gain on him? I want to see, does he have higher um, uh, armor class What's your than AC? I do? Uh, currently 16. I believe lower. Lower than 16. And then uh, I want to see, does he have... Um, more current hit points than I do, and I have 62. Uh, definitely more hit points. I mean, you don't have to say it like that. I'm pretty tough. <laughs> I'm 
definitely not designed to fight six of you in combat. <laughs> I mean, it's really five and a half. Five and a half. The sickly one doesn't count. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. I'm really confused. Can we skip the fractions? Maybe just whole numbers? We've also <laughs> learned maths. He, like, pulls out a tiny little pipe that's, like, hardly the size of one of his fingers, and he just sits there for a moment, kind of, like, fumbling with it, trying to smoke. Like, what the fuck is going on? Duck off from a light, for fuck's sake. Uh, does he appear to have a weapon or anything? Uh, he has four arms. Big arms. Like two arms that are attached to him, and then he's holding two other severed arms as weapons? Or like he has four arms built to his torso and no weapons? Uh, like, you can see on the actual token that I have of him, he's got his, like, two arms crossed in front of his chest. On top of those arms are two more shoulders. I don't see him. No. I mean, I see us inside still. I, we've walked outside and I don't see any tokens. Okay, I got you. So he's kind of looking like Goro. From Let's Mortal see if Kombat. that opens it up. There we go. Oh, yeah, I can see him now. Ah. Uh, I see. That kind of looks like one of those ugly sharks from um, Finding Nemo. <laughs> that's kind of look like a shark. But green. I definitely feel like he's got a shark's nose. A cartoon from the 90s about sharks. Smell that you've not showered for at least a month. Uh, so is there like a word to start, or do I just attack you? Um... <laughs> He's like confused. <laughs> Alright, as soon as he says start, I'm gonna shoot him with my bow. As soon as you shoot him, he charges forward at you. Uh, make your oh shot. My, my ears. I'm assuming we're all rolling initiative at this point? Yeah. So, a nine... Uh, no, that's gonna miss. Fourteen point fourteen, very exacting. Got fourteen decks. I break it. Cheater Sarad. Got the game. <laughs> she just wanted to be near me. Oh, they ruined. Really yeah, not because of romantic reasons. Scales, you know. <laughs> oh well, you know me. There has to be a limit to the amount of scales you can carry. All of them. They're not big. I'm not like a massive dragon where the scales are like the size of a fish or something. I assume Hadar has the highest dexterity versus Sarad. What are your dexes? Dex um, is... Blah, 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 blah. Hello? Oh yeah, it's at the top. Derp. Uh, my dex is 10. Mine's 14. 
She wins. All right, Doc. So as you shoot the first arrow, you see fear just like cross over his face. And without a thought, he just charges into you. One more shot from you. And he would be in combat at that point. Um, roll... Roll a D3 and then a D20. Uh, how do I roll D3? Just backslash R, D3, or you can roll a D6. 8R is 1, R Lyle is 3. And then the 20 is to see if it hits. It's probably more important to roll the 20. So Verthus. Lord. Appreciate it. Um. So roll a d8. So roll a d8. Yeah, I think I'm gonna spend a luck point on that. Oh yeah, my bad. You could have done that anyways. So yeah, you can no, you can change the luck into a into a hit as well. Oh, so wait, is it too late to spend the luck on the initial attack? Because if you say yes, I understand. I was going to at least luck so I didn't crit on one of my allies. All right, I, I guess that makes more sense, is if you don't think to luck to get rid of the one, you can luck to remove the crit and potentially get a miss. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Seems more thematic. Yeah, so a five will miss him then. Uh, anything else from Doc as uh, you shoot, traps and charges into you, and then the second shot goes wide, just kind of plinking off of his uh, flesh? Saw a little fear in your eye there, friend. You doing all right? Uh, and then I will just end my turn. Um, at the end of your turn, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as he reaches onto his back, tearing away a chunk of moss. You see as he throws this like green appendage at you and in air, you can see some of the vines start to like grow and flex out at you, but they're just going to kind of like miss off past you as this chunk of moss just flies on by and it will go to Arla. All right, I move up to be uh, 10 feet away from him. Get the fence I shall impart upon him one long stab. Stabby boy. I say all that. Yeah, I'm like totally thinking Akira appendages. A 16 will hit for 6 damage. Add on. One. A second level to my. And damage. Double again. Fifteen, 15 just hits. And I'll add on a level one device. No, oh, level two. Okay, all in. Going hard today, boys. Hey, Dar, stop it. Sorry. <laughs> If I'm you, not you yet. You, you uh, were activating good. your mic for sure. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. I thought he was serenading in combat. That's what I thought. <laughs> He's like, oh, well. mm -hmm. in anticipation of food. <laughs> that ends with it.
In person. Uh, in character, yeah. Another stab Another into stab it, into and it. at the end of your turn, he's going to react to the pokes as one of his arms just kind of reaches out from behind and just almost, like, twists in as it swings at you. Uh, 22 hit, and he will deal... Uh, 12 slashing damage as he claws out at you. And then it's going to go to Vicious. Okay. Um, I am going to run up. There. Uh, oh, in, I, I go into Rage. See, I remembered. And um, then I'm going to bash at it. I don't know what else to do. Bumble! 20 hits for 11. Again. Roll a d20. Hey, just to double check, uh, that melee attack from uh, Shrapson, was that against Arlisle or against me? Arlisle. Okay, I thought so, but I just wanted to double check. Yeah, my bad. He's got 10-foot reach with his arms. He reached out and touched you. It was a bad touch. Doing all that expensive therapy, thanks a lot. Uh, so, the 18... Ah, damn, he is a large creature. I feel like it makes less sense for a melee combat to hit Doc with a large... Yeah, we'll just throw that away. Uh, drool damage? Do some thunder damage? At the end of your turn, he's going to have an arm doing the same thing, where it's going to swing out behind him, a 27 to hit you, and he's going to do 13 damage, so 6 slashing damage to you. And then it would be Trepson's turn. Good, good. I think I felt a little mosquito and somebody slap at it. I appreciate your valor. Uh, he is going to bite down onto the barbarian striking at him. A 21 to hit. He will do 8 piercing, so 4 piercing damage. And I need you... Oh, wait. And then you'll take uh, 2 poison. So I think 1. I think you've got resistance to poison. No, wait. I think you take all the poison. Who's it hitting? You, Vicious. Okay, so how much? Four piercing is already halved, and then two poison damage. I don't think that halves for you. Uh, does it make a difference whether it's piercing or slashing or whatnot? Piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning are what you take half damage on. That's the only reason those matter. So when I say piercing, that's already halved. It was eight piercing damage you took four of. One arm's going to strike out at Arlisle and I think miss with a 14. Another one is going to strike out at Doc and miss with a 15. As he kind of flails a little bit more wildly with those arms, but it also kind of puts a little bit of distance as he's biting down into the orc before you. Uh, 15 actually hits me. A uh, 15 hits. Uh, it's going to yeah. do. Uh, it's going to end up doing 11 slashing damage. Affirmative. Yes, yes, yes. And then it will go to Hadar. Yeah. 
And I'm gonna just leave her over to him. <laughs> I'm gonna start punching him with my stick. Nine will miss, 23 will hit for five uh, damage. Uh, before, I, I just want to ask, uh, how is he looking? Is he looking good still? Yeah, you guys, yeah, you're going to need to actually do something to this thing. All right, then I'm going to apply uh, a stunning, uh, one key point for a stunning strike on the second one. The Constitution says of 13. 13, yeah. He like shakes as if a shiver like went down his back and he smiles at you and winks. Oh no. And I'm gonna use my bonus action to punch him with my bare hand. Sixteen to hit? Sixteen will hit. Yeah, that will end my turn there. Uh, at the end of your turn, he's going to raise one of his fists high above your head and swing it down! With a 28 to hit, he's going to do 14 bludgeoning damage to you as he smashes your spine into your body. Yeah. Uh, and that will go to Sarat. I guess I'll walk up and cast Inflict Wounds. Is that just the saving throw? Or is that uh, that's a No. Tip? It's a hit, yeah. <gasps> Yay! Holy shit. That was like really bad. Four of those are ones. Um, you're not in danger of doing lethal damage to him. Uh, you just kind of like approach uh, like just one of his sides and like touch him. What are you doing to him? I think... It doesn't even look like I did anything mean. I just walk up and I touch him. Just kind of almost like float past like a little fairy and just with a brush of your finger, an entire like massive portion of one of his muscles just starts to turn black. And within a few moments you see as it like shrivels and it just like crumbles away into dust. Okay. Uh, then it's going to... Hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to go to Virthus from that. Uh, yeah, sure. So... Let's see, let's do some movement. That looks like 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, should be 10. These are 5 foot squares, eh? Uh, yeah, should be. Okay, cool. Um, from here, uh, so 20 feet of movement, then I'm going to use a bonus action. I'm going to cast um, a second level spell slot um, and do Searing Smite. Let me cast that real quick. I'll save that roll for later. All right, then um, 
you know, basically, you know, my glaive is on, you know, lit up uh, on fire, and then I'm going to attack with my glaive. Um, oh, dear. I need to re-roll that other damage. Okay. Then just roll three more d6. Right. I also need to, uh, let's also roll another d10. Well, if you click that damage, it should roll the damage for your weapon. It only rolled it once. Yeah, the 8 and then the 5 is the crit. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Like, it, it knows when it crits, it just doesn't know that the Searing Might is a part, Searing Smite is a part of that crit. Alright. So, the 4 came from the first um, Searing Roll. The 13 came from the crit Searing Roll. Um, the target is also on fire. Uh, and at the beginning of each of its rounds, it must make a DC 13 Constitution saving throw or take an additional fire damage. Um, you see, as the fire envelops around his flesh, it goes out almost instantaneously. And you see, as the massive uh, portions of moss on his back are just steaming like a sauna. Okay, so am I? Does that mean the spell just basically went out? That's what you experience. You don't know the mechanics mm. of it. Sure. He's All not right. on Did fire, I... though. All right, and my turn. Uh, one more attack, I think. Oh yeah, right. Sorry. Is a 12 going to hit? Uh, 12 does not. Got it. Didn't end my turn. Sorry. Uh, he is going to uh, reach out to Verthus and he is going to make attacks with all of his arms as he starts to flail wildly at Verthus. Alright, so he is making five, six, ten strikes at Verthus doing A total of 33 damage. Oh, wait a second. Dear Lord, I didn't put in... That was a terrible mechanic to create, because now I'm supposed to write 10 rolls to hit. So let's do nine attacks with it. Three... Should be six hits, doing three damage each, 18 total damage as his entire body just like stiffens up and all four arms just start to like punch into Verthus and he's like just completely consumed into this rage and it's gonna go to die. Uh, all right so I guess where I'm at right now am I still 10 feet away from him? Uh, you're within five. He charged into you after the arrow shot. Okay, well, presuming I don't know that his range is ten feet, I'm going to do what I always do and step back five feet from him. So I gotcha. don't think he'll get an opportunity attack, but I can still attack at range. Yep. Is that right? Actually, okay. quick question there. Does he have, does he have a ten-foot reach? Yeah, his arms are ten-foot reach. Got it. 
Okay, cool. So that, that's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to step back and uh, I'm going to shoot him with my bow. It would be interesting if I could buy uh, that too because that one is five. Uh, 22 will hit, and as you shoot another arrow into him, he's going to again scream <laughs> and charge out at you. Um, so I think that will give opportunity attacks to Vicious, Hadar, Arlyle, and Verthus. Sure. And he is it. Negative 3 DC while he is afraid of arrows. 16 hit. 22 hit. Twelve hits. Seventeen hits. I'm not sure why the reaction doesn't calculate the damage. There. And then you'll have one more shot again from inside, but you can still step away from him. Yeah, I'm going to do that again. He's going to do the same thing. Shriek out in fear as he charges into you. A uh, 19 will hit. Does he just charge me and not actually attack? He is definitely afraid of arrows. So I gave him a legendary action that when he gets shot at, he charges. <laughs> That's it. It's not like he's thinking, being like wise about it. He's trying to close the distance. I got you, I got you. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I guess when Doc hits him with that uh, second arrow, he's just going to say, uh, thought you were going to jump us into your gang. Looks like you might be auditioning for ours. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to... I'll just end my turn there. You're going to go to our lap? Sixteen hits. Twenty-two hits. And I assume that is everything. Sinking two more smites in. It's going to go to Vicious. All right. So I guess I'll just bash at it again. Because what else are we going to do? Twenty one and a twenty four will hit. Uh, start of his turn, he's going to drop to a knee, taking the cloak off of his back and fanning himself with it as it's still like steaming and like uh kind of like taking this moss across all of his flesh to like kind of uh slather it across like the searing pain and you see he's still like hot from the fire his flesh is still seared um but he um isn't actually on fire at that point and he's bent down on a knee what? looks like talus has made some good choices You've all done well. It will be. And he notices his arm that, like, has no flesh left on it. What the fuck? And he's just gonna stand back up. What are you all doing here? It's 
more or less up to uh, Hadar first. Initiative. But you all have a chance to kill him if you'd like. Otherwise, he is essentially surrendered to you. That was a great fight. Yeah, tell us, I say. Most impressive you all were. Uh, dragon got a little pummeling. Probably could have given out a little bit more. You all were very strong. Like Pat's vicious on top of the head. Thank you. So, where is Talus these days? Talus should be waiting for you upstairs. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, uh, oh, qu just by the by, why can't you go inside the building again? I break things and Talus says she likes the nice things. I see. This is why we can't have nice things. I get it. You're kind of a bull in a china shop, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit too big. When my last arm got cut off and growed back another set, uh, it was kind of the final, final thing. I gained two feet to fight. Uh, like, puts a hand, like, well over his head, and then you see as he, like, kind of stuns himself, like, thinking, like, wait, if I grew two feet and I was that tall... Why is my hand above my head? And he just kind of pauses mm. there for a minute. So, what's next for this evaluation? Now that the uh, Talus has been proven right on recruitment, what uh, you know? What is your role now? Are you just gonna hang out here while we go talk to Talus, or what are you gonna do? I'm the blue, blue left lieutenant. I tell you what to do. But Talus actually does need to talk to you. She's in the banquet hall upstairs. If you go up the stairs, you can take a new left on the stairs, and you'll see she's at the front. Any advice on how to get on her good side? Um, walk to it? Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> I think Talus is expecting you, so I'm pretty sure you're already there. Uh, yeah. Um. Do you like Resmir? And he like leans super close into your face, Sarad, and he's like just kind of like looking into your eyes from like super close. And his big nose is like touching you, and there's a little bit of snot kind of at the end of it, and you can kind of see it. We don't like Resmir here. Oh. Wait, out of character, that's who he killed, right? We nope. killed Landragosa. Oh, okay. Resmir, I think, escaped. Uh, you know, yeah. Landragosa was blue and Resmir was black. Not being racist. Scales here. Yeah. Yeah, who cares about Resmir? Good, good, yeah. That's her good side, right there. Resmir's an app. You got special spells for reading minds. Saw you take my arm off. Can you grow me a new one? Can I have five? You got cool spells like that. I've heard of wizards who can just like cut your entire legs off 
and I would just be, I would be small enough to get in the house if I didn't have legs. Oh, but look at how tall and statuesque you are. Don't let anyone cut off your legs. But the nice things in the house? Okay, maybe, maybe. Yeah, but, uh, mm-hmm, yep. So, you guys can head back into the house if you'd like. Oh, and last thing there, bud. You know, we look forward to taking orders from you. Uh, you know, do you remember? Uh, no, actually, never mind. We'll talk later. Sounds great. Uh, as we go Sounds to walk My bad. As we go to walk away, uh, Doc will hang back for a second. And uh, he will say to uh, Trepson, uh, you performed uh, formidably there in battle, my friend. Uh, sort of remind me of me. Matter of fact, I used to <laughs> have relations with a lady who sort of looked like you. Uh, nice to see a friendly face. <laughs> Man, you're, you're, you're picking women. <laughs> I mean, beggars can't be choosers now. Come on. like looks over everybody he's like hopefully we can fight again and he points to five of you excluding doc i hope, <laughs> ne ne I hope next time we fight together oh, but by the way uh how many days until we go to war i oh, forgot I, I i wrote it down on my papers but Don't tell me any of the good things. Damn me. I protect the lodge, and I welcome new recruits to the White Army. Like, puffs up his chest a little bit. He's got, like, uh, one hand, like, under each peck. He's got, like, he's got, like, abs of pecs. Like, four pecs. Yeah. Hey, the, uh... Shows his one single head. His big stomach. Shows it off too. So okay, guys, so let's 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 head inside again. I I, I heard something about two. So wait, what was the other name? I didn't catch that one. Um, other name as in, like, who you're here to see? Yeah, who his leader is, because I only had Trepson written on. Talus. Well, I believe that's time to go see Talus, then, if we've uh, passed your little test. So, I uh, think... Doc will give him a little nod. I think what we're going to do here is as you all start to walk back inside the veranda, you're going to see a uh, female human, jet black, short hair, uh, standing in long, like, draping white robes, uh, belying armor underneath but it's hard to see what it is. Very much um, like layers of cloaked fabric like on top of it, but you can see like the shoulders, of, like the pauldrons are underneath. So clearly an armored individual, but um, still more of like that cloaked apparel. Uh, and this person is going to be talking to another individual. And at this, can I have Josh describe what Hark looks like? Are you there, Josh? Uh, 
talk talk so, about bad timing. <laughs> yep, we will get back to the introduction of Hark shortly here, but you will see as uh Talus seems to be on the staircase ahead of you all, speaking with another individual who, upon you all arriving, is going to point to you all with a little bit of elation and be like, Oh yes, here the rest of them are. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yep, we got you. Can you describe uh, Park for us? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so he is a uh, half-elf, uh, sort of like white blondish hair, um, sort of average length. That doesn't really tell you much, but it's an average length hair. Um, he's wearing full black robes, which will be a bit singed around the um, sleeves towards the wrists. Um, quite pale, um, looks kind of vaguely unhealthy, but not to the point of Doc. Um, around about, I don't know, five foot nine in height, which is very short for a half elf. Um, and yeah, he's just got his sort of his, um, hands in his, his robe pockets, which is a bit, uh, a bit weird. Well, well, well. It's wonderful for you all to join us. I was beginning to think that our meeting had been delayed and lost, and that I only had the one of you. Please, come with me. Join me upstairs. So is Arlau no longer with us? Uh, I think they're both with us. with us, right? We are effectively going to be phasing out Arlyle here, but yes, Arlyle is currently still with you all. Gotcha. Too long until you see him riding off into a sunset atop a, a brown Mustang. Searching for windmills. With his lance. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to head inside then. And follow them. Fighting giants. Uh, yeah, so you all can head upstairs. Uh, you pass by a few more little doorways as you're crossing the upper levels of the halls um, and enter into a one of the large front sitting rooms is set with a massive table. Uh, it sits about eight or ten people, though it is set currently for seven. Um, among... And I might have counted that poorly. Let's go for eight and include Arlyle instead of immediately throwing him away. Uh, set for eight. It's got large, like, poofy chairs. It's set with a bunch of different, like, sweets as well as some more savory choices as well. But it's set with, like, a massive meal. And very quickly, Talus sits at the far end. Uh, and she just kind of, like, sits and kind of awaits for everybody to gather themselves with a massive uh, portrait, not portrait, um, a massive tapestry behind her, which seems to be a beautiful image of these very similar mountains with uh, snow crest uh, evergreens. And there seems to be a massive uh, deer just standing in the center of the portrait. Uh, everybody would probably notice that this is the first tapestry in this house that has not featured a dragon. Hey, this just gonna stare at the picture. Staring at the oh, tapestry? Staring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's quite beautiful, isn't she? Yeah, sure. I I I like all elements. <laughs> My bad, I didn't quite understand that. What was that? I like all animals. <laughs> yes, we are quite fond of them here as well. So it's a pleasure to meet you, Talos. The pleasure is mine, I assure you. And I'm just going to sit down to, on the table there. To the, uh, on the chair, I mean, not on the table. 
Mark tells me your group was separated earlier. Yeah, I didn't. I believe he was the guy there uh, after us, but it seems like he was faster than I believe. It's good that nothing unfortunate came about. Yeah. I mean, we we didn't really have a problem. We were in a group, but he was alone. I'm happy that he's still here. Well, with unfortunate circumstances aside, we've all gathered here to figure out a suitable end to progress forward towards. Some elements have been moving forth and attempting to change the course of history. I understand your organiza organization has plenty to protect of your own rights, and no doubt you all stand to profit quite a bit with your own moves here, but with proper moves i would like to destabilize resmir and take my rightful seat as the dragon speaker for the white i cannot of course make moves within the cult and that's where you unsavory ladies and gentlemen. And she pauses for a moment looking at Verthus. Come into play. Oh, that shit sounds ominous. I mean... I mean, I would be keenly interested. Um, a white dragon is not necessarily going to incense me right away. Um, hmm. I basically speak, speak up at that point and it's like, how would you propose we undermine Resmir? I have a uh, scale to pick with that one. No doubt. As I understand, everything has been going well with their plans, and that does not suit me. So... I need infiltrators, and those who are not yet attached to the cult. I've reached out to you to see what the Black Network would be able to put forth for me. How we can mutually benefit one, one another. I see the Zentarum are alive and well in this region. Ark's just going to flash you a little a side look. I see. Seems like there's no need for introduction from our side because Hawks already, already did that. Perhaps I assumed too much and she looks back towards Hark. Maybe things are a little different than I presumed. I had begun to be suspicious that things were going poorly for Resmir in Naritar. And you all are those who are causing that, are you not? 
And very quickly, she's going to kind of, like, move a hand forward, like, palm down over the table. But wait, you need not fear me. If you are an enemy of Resmir, that's all I require. Uh, the enemy of my enemy, I guess, is my friend for now. That being said, is there something you particularly, some place you want us to particularly infiltrate? I'm prepared to give you entry into Skyreach Castle. In return for... Deceding Resmir. If you die, it's no consequence to me. If you defeat them, all the better. All I ask is that you do not harm my dragon. Hmm. I'm assuming... Do you have a name for this dragon? For now, you need not know her name. That magic need not go into the power of those who would work against us. Perhaps it is enough for you to know that it is not my interest to unite the chromatic dragons underneath well i can understand that but oh uh, by the way uh the one guy outside talked about some food in here i literally have... described the table is filled with food oh okay, perfect. <laughs> you see like hater was kind of out of his mind and just realized oh i can use my eyes for that his blood sugar is low. Couldn't see the, yeah, the wood for the trees. It would have been quite impossible for you not to have been eating for at least 45 minutes of the three minutes that you've been sitting down here. Yeah. So, just to clarify, are we getting the impression that she knows we're not part of the cult? You're here to pass a child to be recruited, aren't you? I think it is sufficient that there for you to recognize that there were certainly things said, and she now one hundred percent knows exactly who you are. Okay. Well, yeah. If you're comfortable working with us, I'm comfortable working with you, for the time being. I'm not inviting you back, dear. I would like to send you away. And I would prefer never see, see you again. But if you accomplish your task, that helps me accomplish mine. And I think we can all be copacetic with this. Well, I, I'm down for it if you add some ham to, to the deal. <laughs> he wants bacon. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna roll his eyes and go, There's fucking ham everywhere! There's ham everywhere, you fat fuck! <laughs> yeah, but, you know, is, is that his voice? Yeah, I guess it is now. It wasn't my intention, but. Awesome! It's canon now! <laughs> yeah. I don't know how long I can keep that up, but let's give it a go. So, after that little, like, expletive towards Hadar, I'm like. And what is your role, oh pious one over here? Not to heal the ham. At least not before he does. I mean, I haven't had a half elf in a while. Are you volunteering? Pretty sure I could eat you first, big boy. Yeah, I didn't intend to do. The dice told me to. 
I mean, if it hurts your throat, dude, don't do it. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> I like it. Thanks, mate. I like you. Thanks, mate. I like you too. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Doc's gonna start getting jealous. Hey, did we get um an idea? Obviously, you said that uh, um Talus is female, but do, is she a dragon or dragonborn or something like that, or is she human? Uh, she was human. I mean, I I look over. I mean. He's just thinking about this, right? So, guys, looking up, go ahead, uh, go ahead. I want you to go ahead and please, for the love of God, don't make it about food. Yeah, I, I was sure I wanted to. So, guys, I, I believe you should uh, join hands with her. I mean, I think it's our best way to, uh, yeah, to <laughs> get down, kill the guy. I it's... mean, it, out of character, it sounds like this is how we move the plot forward. Probably. <laughs> but, but uh, I, I I always wanted to be a spy. <laughs> <laughs> but that was in in, in character now for uh, for Hayden. <laughs> Double O Hadar. You can move in as a spy if you desire. It can certainly further my aims if you are able to make your way into the castle and arrest it from the hands of Resmir. The castle will not be easy to take from within, but I can give you entry to it and get you there safely. What happens once you are on the castle is a different thing entirely. And that's why I say your success will help me, but your success need not bend to my will any more than I ask you not to harm the white dragon. Just a question. Is the white dragon in the castle? So, I mean, if it's not there, I can't hurt it, so... I believe you will find her in the castle. Does he have some, some kind of code word so we can identify her? Yes, the code word to identify her is to walk up to her face and say, Eat me, O oh Great One. Can I ask her, can I eat you, Great One? I'm, I'm sorry, this was a joke. Ask her. He flipped that. It will be a wonderful choice on your decision. Okay, I'm gonna write that in my notes. I'm sure there's not some great all-powerful being who's going to create an auto-kill that will destroy you for doing such insolent things. Oh, you never know before. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, mate, you've, you've played this character for a long time now. It's probably almost too long for you to the point where you don't know what to do with it anymore, so it probably is for the best that you suddenly kill him off for no reason. Oh. <laughs> Tell me, what has motivated you? You're not the Zentarum that I expected. And perhaps you even aren't Zentarum yourself, as she looks to Hark. But you I... all have seemed to rage in Resmir's path this whole time. What has inspired you to rise up against her. Ooh, how do we explain? <laughs> it's a long story. 
Oh, that was going to say. Well, there was these frog people, and then these lizard people, and there was oh, there was greenest. Um, oh, they attacked the greenest, and we there was a ballista. Doc, oh, tell them about the ballista. Oh, oh, it was so cool. And then we, there was a fight. Uh, Landa Rosa. Um, oh, Doc, on you, you tell it better than me. Uh, the truth is, we're just a ragtag band of uh, travelers that just seems to have some uh, final goals in line. But uh, along the way, we've sort of picked up a couple more uh, little objectives. And the truth is, it sounds like your goals will fit right in with our plans. And while we don't expect much from you, uh, sounds like you could be a useful ally. <coughs> Group of murder horrors. <coughs> Hey, oh, like, I'm down, disgusted at how dirty it is. Mark C. About breaking eye contact, slowly just prod one of his. Oh, mate, what are you saying? Maybe then. I mean, I'm I'm internally debating. Um. Uh, basically, I mean, I, I think I'm going to ask her then. Uh, do you oppose the spawning of the avatar of Tiamat? My family has long supported the master. This quest of severance is beyond our desires. It is my understanding that the rise of Tiamat will not benefit white dragons, nor my family's keep. For my part, I do not believe Tiamat's rise is for our benefit. Then in that, we have an accord. And do you all speak as one? Oh, that's no. Sorry, go right, cool. <laughs> I would probably get a stupid look on my face, and I was, as, as, as cool as it would say we speak as one, my face would be like, uh... Vicious, what were you thinking? I'll just nod with the whole, sure, we speak as one. Arla, what were you thinking? I was just going to say, yeah. What? First, among my necessities, you can take a doggy bag, just fill your arms, dear fucking lord. First, among the things that we have to go with, can any of you read minds? Ada's gonna stare at her intensely. She's gonna shove a uh, Turkish delight into your mouth as you look at her with your stupid stare. Oh, thanks. Yes, I can save you the time. Does anybody read minds? I'm gonna use Mage Hand and thrust the Turkish Delight even further into his throat. That's Hark. You would believe that Hader would be uh, uh, almost throwing up from that, but you can see as it goes down even faster. No gag reflex cannon. Yay! And so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> While we, uh, as a group, have some magic inclinations, uh, overall, we're not of the uh, caster sort. And uh, from what I understand, we're far from reading minds. I can't read minds, but I can make people tell the truth within a very small radius around me, and I'm sure my dragon friend. I'm sure that can be very useful. 
do not know how it could help me. The person who I need the truth from could easily keep it to themselves. I'm sure we can find ways of making him talk. He sounds like a gangster goblin. That's what it is. How did you know? Polymorph to trick you into thinking that crazy eyes guy. 50 dates, whatever it was. And what way do you suppose that you could get someone to speak? Well, we always have our ways. You can stab them, set them on fire, or you can pretend to be someone they like and then trick them into telling you. And you have ways of becoming someone you are not? I'm going to use... Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm going to use Disguise Self and turn myself into her. Uh, you tell me, and this be useful, maybe. Intriguing. Uh, Srod. Cough, Srod. Yes? Don't you have similar ability? Of course not. Oh. I'm going to use Disguise Self and turn myself into her and go, Oh, of course not! <laughs> I don't want to give away that my hat's the only thing keeping me looking like this. <gasps> what twist? Please, we just got to end if you're using an ability that is limited, stop that. I'm going to turn, down, turn the power off and just uh, look shamefully down at my, uh, at my shoes. Are you spent? Not even close, lady. Excellent. Well, I just so happen to have an ally in the basement who might have pertinent information that would be beneficial to remove, and they won't give it up for free. And who is this mysterious person? You really assume that you know who they are? It is a dwarf. Kragdorn. I'm sure you know everything about them. Yeah, totally, 100%. Yeah, everything. Excellent. So with that solved, there's no more need for information. I would like but... you to... Sorry, for the benefit of these guys, I think you should explain it to them because they probably don't know. I mean, look at the uh, look at the unhealthy one. He ain't got a clue. Tell him. Tell it. Tell the smoking one. Ah, uh, yes. How convenient it would be to share with them. Ragnar is the lieutenant of Varum the White, the one who I have been deceited to give the White Dragon Mask to. I have captured Kragnor and have been incapable of getting proper information from the dwarf. Do you believe it is in your capabilities of posing as Varum and gaining some information from Kragnor? I probably need to see a picture of him or something, or a description, but like a really accurate one. Well, Varum is not often seen, but he is a dark-skinned dwarf of mediocre stature, maybe four feet in height, large brown beard, Balding. I'm sure he smells like dwarf. I. When you use disguise self, does it change your clothing? 
It does, but I'm only allowed to go either one foot above or below my normal height. So a dwarf would be a very big stretch. Or the opposite of that. It'd be fucking hilarious. Big ass um, dwarf. I don't have the proper robes that Varum would wear. We all decorate them a little bit more precisely to our own desires. But I can show you my robes, and I can describe what I know of Aram's. And perhaps you could execute the change and rescue Ragnar. Yeah, we give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? We try it. And if it doesn't work, we just stab him or set him on fire. But yeah, I'm up for that. Unless... Any of these random people got a better idea? I mean, look at that, that orc one there. What do you, you drooling one? What do you think? Yeah, thought as much. Fucking nothing. Right. <laughs> show it, show it his robes. Jesus, fuck. Where'd you find these people? So, I think. The proper decision should be for everyone to dress as cultists. We will send you with Varum and have you rescue Kragnor. And with that, you all should be able to ask any questions that you desire of the dwarf. And perhaps find any other weaknesses that we might be able to exploit. Does that sound like a plan for you to execute? Of course, I must be gone. Trepson can be nowhere to be seen. You will have the house to yourselves. Maybe even be good to have a battle sounded off so they can hear the fighting. <laughs> Don't look in! Wait, what? So we're going to make noise of a battle so that the dwarf downstairs thinks that we've just fought our way in, yeah? Yes, perhaps it would be sufficient to just have Trepson come inside the, ho the house, let him oh, destroy a, good a good bit of things, and then you all can head into the basement, inquire what you can from Cragmore, and then dispose of the dwarf once you've gained your information. Oh, I was going to say, and I'm sure he would love that. I think he's been itching to do that for a long time. But will this place be... Are you not bothered about having this place destroyed? I mean, it seems awfully um, quaint. To make an omelette, sometimes you must break some eggs. While I am quite fond of this home, I am more fond of wearing the fucking white dragon mask. If you don't believe that you can execute this, we can Give you the robes, give you access to the wyverns, and you can fly off to your castle. I mean, out of character, I say we give it a try, right? Yeah. Yeah, fake battle sounds sure. like a good one. I mean, sounds like all we need to do is uh, cause some noise, maybe... Pretend we're confederates. Hey, we're here to rescue you, and uh, maybe we can do the whole, uh, you know, you're my friend, and try to get his confidence. What, his name is Ally again, that we can say sent us to rescue him? Well, you're going to be going as Varum the White. You're going to rescue Cragmore the Dwarf. Right, okay, got it.
So if everyone's all set, basically we'll uh, array all of you in cult robes. Uh, Talus will show you her own particular robes and describe like a few of the differences of what she knows to be the differences in Varum's robes. Um, feel like you can't make a staff, but she has a relatively similar, uh, like mage's staff as Varum's, um, which basically is me saying gives you enough that you can probably become Varum to a extent. Uh, and then Talus is going to tell you all the way through the kitchen down into the basement to where you can access the dungeon. Uh, and wish you all well as uh, Trepson is invited into the house and immediately just starts like accidentally bumping into things breaking massive portions of like banisters off and it's just one of those like uh things where like every single time trepson goes to like balance a vase like another arm knocks something else over and there's almost immediately a ruckus and a thundering inside of the home as talus steps out I mean, who all is damaged right now? That's not full health. I'm damaged a little bit. I am. What about you, Doc? Yeah, I'm damaged a little bit, but I'm fine. Well, I'm not too worried about, like, survivability. I'm just thinking, like, the people who have damage, you know, that have uh, recent wounds and so forth, I think we should be the ones that go first down into the dungeon. And then the people who are not damaged maybe coming down secondary, um, reporting on Trepson. And so it looks like, you know, we've just been into a fight recently, you know, to make it look like we're more legit, you know? Good idea. We were in a fight recently. Yeah, yes. Indeed. What he was saying is use the fact that you were in a fight to walk in and act like you were in a fight. <laughs> Right. Instead of taking a break to make a deal with somebody who wants a white dragon mask, let's look like we're here to rescue. I was going to stand near the entrance of the dungeon and shout, Quick, they're here to save the dwarf! Defend it! And by oh, here, the deception lodge... check at disadvantage. Fuck. <laughs> That's fucking retarded. <laughs> well, I thought it was excellent. I gave I mean... you the person's ally, and your initial thought is, Oh my god, they're coming to save the dwarf! Oh yeah, they were fighting upstairs. Alright, one sec, I gotta get his character sheet back up. I mean, did you really think that's an honest deception and not a troll deception? Because that sounds yes, like I... a troll deception. I thought it would be helpful, to be honest with you. Six, there you go. Sorry, everyone. I thought I was being helpful. I, mean, I thought I was, it was helpful. I thought it was, I mean, I was down with it. I mean, at that point, I would have like rushed down in, you know? So, rushing down into the basement, you all see a fully stone room there are multiple bone fragments and things around the general square that you're looking in on there are three people who are chained up against the wall one of them is a dwarf who seems to be cut ragged bloody near naked very much injured uh, another one appears to be a female human who, though is ragged, doesn't seem to be tortured in the same way. Um, definitely does seem to have been beat still. And then a human male who seems to just be perfect. Uh, the human male is still chained up. Uh, but they're the one who is not, like, chained hands lifted above the head and is kind of hanging there. This person is just kind of, like, sat up in a huddle against the wall and 
seems to be staring at you all. The other two don't really seem to have the energy to kind of look into you at present. But that would be what you see there. Uh, I mean, the paladin in me is like, you know, do, we don't see the dwarf yet, do we? No, dwarf was the first one I described. Right, then there was a woman chained up, and then some pristine human male sitting, pretty. Correct. Uh, I mean, I'm going to try to pretend to look, you know, speak hurriedly, you know, just like, hey, uh, we're here to get you out, and just kind of like look around to everybody and kind of look at the party, point everybody to another person to, you know, set them free type thing. Need me to roll anything for that? Uh, just you saying we're here to get you out and then pointing everybody off? Yep. No, nah, I don't think so. What's everybody else doing? Are you going for I'm... a particular person, Rithis? Um, I mean, I will kind of like say to Doc and Adar to, you know, free the dwarf and, uh, you know, the, the trope in me is going to try to feed the, you know, the free the female first. And I'd be like, oh no, I'm so wrong from the fight. Let's help the door. So come on. So are these chains locked, or do we yank them out of the wall? What? <laughs> um, what do you want them to be, Vicious? Well, I'm just like, is it easy to get them out of the chains, or... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, can we break them? Are they magical? How do we free these people? Is there a key? Yes, you can fucking break them. You can tear them out of the wall if you want to. You can try to smash them with your hammer. You can do whatever you want, but they're in a fucking prison cell. So yes, there are chains attached to them. I'm gonna kind of look around to see if there's any place that has like um keys on the wall or something or anything to unlock these there cells. There's not appear to be any keys in this room. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna try to see if I can smash open one of the uh, the doors. Uh, yeah, just do a strength check, or you can do an attack if you'd like to attack it with your weapon. Mm, athletics, maybe. Or just strength. Uh, you can have athletics proficiency. Yeah, I. I want you all to describe what you'd like to do. Yes, you are able to break the chains free of the female. Thank you, thank you very are the, much. Are the healthy ones in the room? Or not yet? It's all one big room. I mean, because weren't we staggering who went in first from our party? That's right. So I'm not in there yet, right? I'm waiting. I mean, I, I, I would say you can wait as long as you want. I mean, like, I thought it would be like, it makes sense to see people hurt first, and then you guys can come down soon afterwards. Soon it could be whatever amount of time you, you know, see fit. I never want to tell this group to wait, because you're usually standing there not doing anything, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I would say if you want to be in the room... You just walked into the room. Right. Before I walk into the room, clearly I've massively misunderstood what is going on here. So, <laughs> I'm just being honest. So, I'm pretending to be a dwarf that's five foot tall because that's as low as I can go. And I'm, I have observed the cultist robes and I'm pretending I'm dressed like a cultist and I'm going in there. You guys have rushed in as if you've just had a big fight upstairs. 
and you're saving people and i'm gonna be like oh it's you oh, we're here to save you are you okay my friend and then i'm gonna ask him what am i gonna ask him because i've forgotten something about where is white mask yeah well I, I was gonna say like um what was that um the started with a v Ver, um uh, verthen or whatever you are Verthus. Yes, I'm Verthus, yes. But no, <laughs> uh, Cragmore is like a uh, benefactor. His name also started with a V as well, right? Uh, yeah, Varum. Varum. You know, I was going to, you know, the, the plan was like, say, hey, Varum sent us to free you, but, you know, we're freeing anybody who is trapped here. So Varum sent us to free you, and the door's called Cragmore, right? Yeah, the dwarf, I think, is Cragmore. Right, got it. So, um, and who am I pretending to be again? I thought I was pretending to be Varum, that's what it says in my... I've, by the way, I've now started typing my notes instead. I don't know why it's <laughs> taken me so long to do this, because as somebody with handwriting as bad as mine, I should have started typing notes a long time ago. So I've got, someone, the white is her master, question mark. The one who hired her, Varum, a dark-skinned dwarf who is only five foot-ish tall. Uh, some kind of mage, uh, rescue Cragmore so he can get the info, um, and then it's something about that's, that's the end of the notes I got. Yeah, I thought Cragmore was in this room, and we we're trying to get questions from him. Or oh, answer. What was that? Sorry, vicious. Isn't that the dwarf? Yeah, I thought he was Cragmore, and I was pretending to be someone who was called Varum, dwarf. I didn't think I was sent by Varum. I thought, well, you know, I don't think the rescue party was sent by Varum. I thought Varum was the guy I was going to be who was going in to talk to him. Like, I'm hey. so glad we're clearing this up right now. <laughs> and, uh, tell me about it. That's why I was like, yeah. But so, and then, so I'm going to tell him I'm Varum and I'm going to be using disguise self to look like a dwarf uh, who's like a mage dwarf in the cultist robes that I've been shown. But what is the information I'm trying to get out of him? I mean, uh, I mean, the chick upstairs wanted us to find the white dragon mask, and he supposedly knows where this information. I mean, that's what she asked us to find out from this guy. All right, because meta, but my plan is to go in and pretend to be like, "Oh, you look rough. I'm going to give you a heal." Whilst he thinks I'm still that guy, and I'm going to cast friends on him subtly, whilst he doesn't see me as a hostile, so I can get him on side and tell us anything. Um, but I can't. I'm not. I've lost. I've lost confidence in the line of question that will follow that. Because <laughs> I feel like I can't just go, quickly tell us before it's too late, where's the white mask? <laughs> and, uh, I mean, because once he asks another question, I'll be like, hey mate, I'm fucking though. I, I thought shouting that we're saving you was a good idea, but I was wrong. Any anyone got any ideas? Doc? Jamie? Anyone? Jan? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we're supposed to find out from Cragdon where the uh, white dragon mask is, because he's the dragon lieutenant and got captured. So she already said that, uh, Talus said she could get us into the castle already, but she's trying to figure out where the mask is from what I had interpreted. Uh, so I think that's what we're trying to figure out from Cragdon is where is the mask. Maybe we can pretend to be interested in making sure it stays safe. Okay, I like that. Yeah, good idea. We, we, yeah, we haven't got enough time. Blah blah blah. Need to quick. Need to tell us in case you know one of us doesn't make it out of here. And maybe um, the woman we just talked to, she escaped, so it's not like the threat is over. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I guess uh, I could use my thieves' tools and try to uh, take the shackles off of uh, Cragdon. Hey, there's an idea. <laughs> Can I use mending to break things? I do not think so. Okay. All right, so I adorn my disguise using disguise self based on the description that I was given and the robes that I was shown. And I'll go down into the dungeon and I'll look out of breath and hastily glancing around and then spot him and go, okay. I mean, <clears throat> oh, Cragmore, there you are. <laughs> and I'll run over to him. Quickly, get him out of these chins! Bird Scottish. Make a performance check. Looks like. 
Eight. Fuck. I mean, what's he care? He's getting rescued. Is it dark in this dungeon? <laughs> we cast darkness and then we walk in. All dwarves are Scottish, man. Varum. Yeah, it's me, it's Varum. Are you okay? You're in danger here. Tell us. Oh, don't worry about her, she's upstairs. We'll, she'll be dead soon. See him happy praise. Get him out of these chains. I'm just gonna fire a fireball up the stairs. Keep them back! We're gonna get him out of here! Uh, and Doc, who were you trying to unlock? Uh, I'm gonna unlock the door. Do a dexterity check. With proficiency, if you have these tools, proficiency? Uh, no proficiency, but uh, I'll use my inspiration to try to get it open. Thank you, friend. I was beginning to worry that you weren't aware that I was taken. I'm sorry it's taken a while, but we had to be sure. I'm gonna, as I'm gonna try and help him to his feet, whilst I'm in contact with him, help him up, I'm gonna subtly try and cast friends on him. Alright, two things are gonna happen there. I'm pretty sure he can feel through your disguise. So if you try to help him to your feet, oh, you feel like an elf and not like the dwarf that you look like. Oh uh, shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> and two, you can cast friends. Uh, I'll cast friends just before I touch him. I'll run in as this is happening and say, we've cleared the rooms, but Talus has escaped. And let's see, Verthus freed the female. The uh, human is just kind of looking on in, in fear at you all. Uh, what is... What, what's what's going on? Are we? Are you? Is are 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 we safe? You're safe for now. Yes. Can you uh, cast friends with Hark? Oh yes, yeah. Sorry. Uh, now I'll also do a uh, medicine check when I have an opportunity uh, to see what condition the dwarf's in. Um, is this with proficiency or anything, or you're just like getting like a general feel for like his uh, well-being? Yeah, no proficiency, just general feel for his well-being. I mean, obviously he's conscious, so that's good. Uh, do a medicine check. Thirteen. Uh, it seems like a little bit emaciated. Most of his wounds seem rather superficial, uh, as if like initial bouts of torture have been used on the dwarf, uh, but kind of going over things other than seeming to be like, you can see like cracks in his lips from like not being given water. Um, other, other than like beginning onsets of starvation and, um, and thirst, uh, the dwarf seems in general, all right. You're going to be just fine, cragged on here replenish yourself uh and i'll uh, pull out some rations and uh canteen maybe offering my flask as well um, i never know with the naming 
Do you mean to butcher his name? <laughs> oh, I wrote down Cragdon. Is that wrong? I think it's Cragmore. Cragpole or Cragmore? I don't think a single person heard it correctly, and nobody asked Talus to repeat it. Yeah, I heard Crag more. That's what I got. Okay. Just kind of looks at you with a weird face and then looks back at Varum. Where did you get these fools? I'm sorry, I didn't have much time. We had to hire anyone we could. Us is returning. We need to go. Please get out of this place. Yeah, we'll get out of here. We need to go. But listen, in case we don't make it out of here, we need to know the white mask. Where's the white mask? Roll a deception check. Even with a plus seven, it's only fucking 13. There we go. And he basically went straight roll because, in my opinion, Barham is the one person who should know where it is. To ask where the dragon mask is, is already... Kind of telling. All right, uh, so that's why it went to like straight was because he did pull off the friends. That makes sense. Mask. Not safe in your keeping. You... And Cragmore shakes his head, like, confusedly, trying to, like, clear all of, like, just, like, the, the clouds from his eyes as he's just, like, shaking it off, like, what is going on? You mean it's in my keeping? I, uh, I need, uh, this isn't the time or place, but listen, there's been an imposter he's replaced me, so my replacement's got it. I've been missing for a year. I'm just fucking... <laughs> Wait a riff. <laughs> Do another deception check. It's all the way down, plus seven. It's the highest modifier I've ever had. Ni 19, there we go. How long have I been? When did Talus take me? When did they take you? A year? I've been replaced for about six months, and you've been down here for about three, I think. I don't know. We, we haven't got time. Just, just, it's with my imposter. Is that what you're saying? We haven't got time. Just answer my questions. That took the mask. Who are you? Christ, what did I do to you? Do you not recognize me? It's me! Have you been drugged? Kind of like looking over your personage slowly Cragmore's eyes seem to be 
kind of like clearing up as if the haze is kind of shedding from from their presence and doesn't really seem to be a staunch ally. The friend spell has them lost in this idea where you're saying one thing, they feel another, and none of the facts make sense. They don't match up. And you can see this like inner turmoil in Cragmore's eyes. All right, whatever, get off me. So, Ballas has got the mask, right? Cool. Anyone else have any thoughts at all at present? Uh, Doc will do a medicine check on the female. I hesitate to think what that would include. Oh, uh, you can roll She's... another medicine check. Does she steal his possessions? Uh, she seems healthy enough. Um, it's kind of a dissimilar idea. She's been, like, beaten and has like injuries but has also been like fed and uh given like uh water um so she's not like in the same levels of starvation her wounds are more physical and less like prolonged torture uh come here often do you I was just delivering a cart of goods, and I was attacked. These people... Who are you people? I see a uh, wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, care for a cigarette? Wow, chicka, wow, wow. Oh. <laughs> That's going to proceed to spit random game at the uh, imprisoned lady. Oh, captive audience. Hey, baby, how you doing? She continues to be on the verge of death. I just whisper a quiet healing word on her to help out a friend, you know? He took away his biggest bargaining chip. What do you mean? It's like, hey, baby, I'll give you a heal for some, uh, you know. Oh, but she can't appreciate if she's dying. Damn. <laughs> You're enabling. <laughs> yeah. Wingman, you know? Perks her up a little bit. Uh, she seems a little bit stronger. You see some of her, like, more outwardly injuries almost heal before your eyes. Some of the bruising is reduced. But she still looks... Overall, uh, in pain, but she does look a little bit stronger, a little bit fitter, seems to be a little bit more of a uh, prepared individual than your go-to commoner. But while Doc is kind of dealing with his, uh, his new girlfriend, um, how's the human male doing? Uh, he's, like, urinated on himself, just staring as you guys freed the other two, and he's still bound there, uh, in chains. He is, like, absolutely in, in fear. Just, like, taken back, has no clue how to interpret this situation. So what, he's trying to cosplay his doc? <laughs> oh, no! Wow. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, I, I thought mean... he was perfect. <laughs> What was that? I mean, I... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I thought he was perfect. You know, if he's having trouble um, understanding where he should urinate, that's probably not my definition of perfect. 
try being the guy who doesn't get tortured when everybody around you getting tortured. This guy has no fucking clue what's going on. Well, neither do the rest of us. I mean, I'm going to free the guy anyway. I mean, strange check or something to try and pull the chains out and free him. Uh, like you're just going to pull him out from the wall? can do an athletics. Just, like, tear it out from the wall as the guy, like, just, like, looks up at you, like, very much like the, uh, slave from Conan Barbarian, where he's just like, um, where, where are we going, master? Come with me if you want to live. Yes, please don't hurt me. Please, I just... Oh, nobody. I got it, man. Mm. That was metaverse, though. It's fair. I do not think you guys approached that in a way that seemed convincing. Blame me for, for shouting that there was a bike going upstairs to try and save them. It definitely was not a single factor. Blame me for my interrogation. <laughs> so did we miss the point there? Were we supposed to be trying to figure out where the white mask is? Or did we mess that up? Um, I don't think the line of questioning that was pursued got you any information from the person. Um, effectively, I think all you gained was that the dwarf thought Varum had the mask, and if Varum was captured a year ago, he, that was like a big thing that like clued him into it. Um, which, it's details that you guys don't know, but that comment probably more than anything, stop the dwarf from answering questions. I don't know, man. Somebody came along and told me in a world full of spells that whilst I was all delirious and tortured and shit, that, oh, it's, there's a fight going on and it's all urgent. It's, oh, we're breaking you out of here. We're breaking you out the chains. We're getting you out of here. Um, oh, everything's confusing and it's all weird. But by the way, uh, it's just me. It's Valis, Varen or whatever it's called. Varen, yeah. And, uh, oh, I've been replaced. Honestly, I need you to tell me now. I'm the good guy. I'm saving you. I don't know. I thought it would be pretty convincing. Well, I'm not saying that there aren't aspects of it that can be convincing. My point was, is that between the actual roles that were going on and what was said, that to me was the biggest breaking point where it was no longer the dwarf was believing that you, you quite literally said that you had been replaced, which is a great reason to doubt somebody to say, I have a doppelganger who looks exactly like me and they're pretending to be me. Well, I'm going to assume that you might be that person too. Yeah, but the doppelganger was in place. I was breaking it out. But it's fair. I'm not going to question it. I'm going to go with the punches. But he's also his friend. Exactly. I thought I am like Shyamalan, that guy. <laughs> I never heard a phrase that way, but yeah, that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> I have zone of truth, if that would help. Yeah, fuck it. What we've got to lose at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm this close to blowing his head off, so just... Yeah, <laughs> well, I'll start with the girl, then I'll the perfect guy. And then, if he doesn't tell us, then I'll blow his head off. So use only true first, and then then we start murdering. Okay. Just go back to what we're best at, and that's murder homering. That's sad. It's gotten us this far. <laughs> that's right. Who am I to question? Yeah, Murder Hobo, also known as how we as a team move plot forward. So yeah, I guess 
I will cast Zone of Truth. And what are you all thinking moving forward with the Zone of Truth? Nothing. I'm going to let Sarad do it because I butchered what <gasps> that was. No! <laughs> I need help! Murphy said he's a charismatic back to brave. If, if I can step aside out of character, working as a team is the biggest thing that you all need to do. Not saying nothing, I'm going to step aside and let Sarad do it. Sarad did her part. Zone of Truth is what she should do. You, as the dwarf, should then have questions, but you all could have prepared thoughts on what you wanted to ask instead of gone in there. I feel like somebody could have possibly said, maybe don't say, I don't know where the mask is. Where's the mask? Maybe don't say a time frame of how long you've been missing. Plan together. Work as a team. I want to see you guys riffing off of each other. I mean, I get that, but I mean, I mean, we're still <laughs> learning each other, right? It's been like four sessions for, you know, them playing with like Teresa and I. We haven't developed that riff rapport yet as much as it'd be cool if we had that. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a win that we paused before running in and cleared up Josh's questions. <laughs> Oh yeah, because I was like, that... oh shit, I would have been like, hey, what's your favorite <laughs> poem? Yeah. That was definitely good, because had you walked in there and not said, I'm Varum, <laughs> like, that would have been fucking hilarious when he saw Varum, and then the guy was not acting like Varum. I thought I was breaking the rules by doing that, by the way, because I always thought that anything we say is sort of considered being said in character, so I, I thought that that was stepping outside of what we were allowed to do. So I, I would rather you always speak in character, but that doesn't mean that you guys don't spend extra time at that table with Talus talking, plotting, and planning. If we start riffing now, I mean, it's going to be in front of him whilst the is active, so we can't really do that now, right? It's too late, that ship sailed. I mean, there's a certain level of your disguise is already lost. But I don't see why you guys can't still take time to try to plot how to salvage it from this point and then jump back into character. But again, in general, I want you all to, as much as possible, stick in character. Because I think you'll have less holes in what you're trying to accomplish if you actually say stuff in character. So out of character, does anybody know for sure what we were supposed to find out from this captured dwarf. Where the white mask is. I guess we were trying to figure out how to get it. Maybe by pretending that we were trying to safeguard it or something. I'm, I'm not clear. The lady in the lodge, um, Talus, wanted us to get the white mask and then burn the thing down and not kill the white dragon. Um, so therefore, this guy she had downstairs, she'd been torturing for ages and couldn't get it out of her, out of him. So therefore, she was like, hey, you guys try it. Get out of him if you can. So that's why we went down, because we went down to find out if we could get the White Mask location out of him. And he's basically said that, um, who was I? Varum has it. We, we don't know who Varum is or where he is or anything, so we're not really fully there yet. Yeah. But she basically said to us, I've been torturing this dude trying to figure out what the white mask is, and he won't tell me. So, torture him, or whatever you have to do, find out where the white mask is, and then kill him. That was what she said, basically, right? I believe so, yeah. And I suggested the whole gambit with trying to appear like we're saving him, because, well, without sounding too metagamey, to help on maybe persuasion or whatever checks, like, hey, you know, we're on his side. So that was kind of my goal. So, you know, I was kind of opening up that up for somebody else to do the questioning. I oh, mean, yeah, with... that... sorry, I didn't realize you, you weren't finished yet. Go on. No, I'm saying, but now we have friends and Zone of Truth. So even if we don't have a plan on what we're going to say, we can kind of ask anything at this point because this person is like, 
super happy to see us, right? We're friends with at least the um, park and can't tell a lie right now if, unless he passed that wisdom saving throw. He cannot answer a question, though. And he does recognize that Ark is not Varum, but a friend. But, okay. Uh, so do we have to take a test on the zone of truth uh, to see if we have to tell the truth, too? Yeah, I think everybody um, inside of the zone would have to. Okay, so what do I have to do? Wisdom? Let me check. Because I'll try to question him some. Or oh, try I would have like... figured it was Sarad's DC Charisma. that she posted, yeah. Yeah, Charisma 14. Oh, no. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, but uh, all I'll that means is you have to answer questions truthfully, or you can just not answer the question. Yeah, but if I'm going to, like, ask him questions, I have to tell the truth, don't I? I think you can withhold things, so... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I think Zone of Truth, the biggest thing that is a failure point on Zone of Truth, is it's literally up to you whether you want to talk, you just have to speak truthfully. Yeah, so if I'm going to try to persuade him into thinking something's not true that is, I need to pass that test. So I will use a luck point and reroll that. I mean, could it work to our benefit to have someone who's yeah, but he also know compelled? He failed it, right? I mean, we could point it out. Can can I tell by looking at this dwarf that's been captured um, what kinds of skills he has, like what his calling in life was is? Um. An insight check? I don't think so, but I think super high DC. Um, he's pretty much stripped of all of his equipment at this point, so he's more or less just wearing like undergarments and rags kind of thing. Uh, he seems to be a stout figure. But I don't think it's really going to tell you too much other than he's essentially, like, fit. Yeah, I'm not trying to make this difficult. I just want you all to ask questions of this person. Do you want to take a break and plot and plan some questions? This was supposed to be somebody for you <laughs> all to ask questions of a cultist who you had control of and can ask anything that you want. Talus only asked you to, if you can find any information about the white dragon mask, get it for me. But other than that, Talus was giving you a blank check to talk to a cultist who was her enemy. And that was it. Right. But he, here's the opposite thing. If we choose not to pursue, you know, like, you know, it sounds like logical sense that we would challenge somebody we perceive as evil, right? But it's also equally okay if we just blindly accept something, right? Maybe oh. we're just that type of party. It's like, oh, hey, we agreed to do that, knowing that person's probably evil. They're up to no good, and they want us to receive, receive, retrieve, I should say, an evil artifact. If we do that, I mean, that's also player fiat too, right? We don't always have to be, like, challenging everything, right? Well, I don't know what you're, what you're getting at. If you guys don't want to question this person, the other option was to take the wyverns to the sky castle.
And that's fine. I mean, if, if we, we can, let's take a break. And if <laughs> there are questions don't pan out something, then let's move on. Sure. That, that was I mean, my point, but I'm trying to ask yeah. you what you were getting at, Teddy, because you said that about making your choices, but I'm, I want to pursue the questions that you all want to do. If you want to zone of truth and ask questions, I want you all to ask the questions, but if you're not going to ask questions, we surely don't need to burn a zone of truth. Well, I would like to ask questions, but before we do, maybe we can all check in on what the story is so that we're not asking weird questions. <laughs> yeah. I think the problem is, is that you presented us with an opportunity to question this person, to gain useful knowledge about potentially us like attacking this castle or whatever. And we don't really know what to ask or what we're after. I think that's the issue is we don't understand what we're supposed to be doing right now if not trying to get that white mask. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's also not necessarily an opportunity to gain information on the castle. Um, it is an opportunity to gain information on the cult. I could also ask him about uh, what he knows about Talis and what he really is after, probably. And the dragon she's serving or working for. If he, this came up in my mind. Yeah, so maybe it's okay to. Never mind. <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> no, I just realized I was going to say maybe it's okay to tell him at least part of the truth about, you know, we're not actually in league with Talus. Um, so, like, finding out background information about why they had a falling out, his faction and hers, from his perspective. I'd like to do that at least to get a sense of whether or not he passed um, the DC think, or not. I think that's a really good idea because you already understand that the Varum thing has failed. That perhaps shedding some actual truth on the situation is might be your best chance at that point. So I definitely think that's a good idea. Okay. And again, it's because you've got to recognize that something happened between Hark as Varum and the dwarf, that something clicked where he's still friendly, but he's not answering questions. Right. Unless we make it clear to him that maybe we're here to help him, we can get him out of here. He can go on doing whatever it is that he does. And yeah, since we're his friends, he should help us. To some extent. Yeah, we could go for that. So let's take a few minutes here. Everybody plan for a few moments and try to gain an idea of what you want to ask uh, of this uh, dwarf. Um, and we're essentially still inside of that dungeon uh, with the three individuals freed at that point. I believe we free time, sir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so we want to, to after the break, we want to approach them and try to trick them again, or if I got it right, trick them into believing that we were friends. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. By pulling out, by pulling out another lie. And then we w want to try to inquire where the, the where the mask is, and uh, yeah, if he knows probably something about Talos and so on. Yeah, I sort of look at this guy as like potentially offering useful information, but probably not going to be like game breaking in one direction or the other right. so I think more likely we would just get like some kind of useful information as towards like the motives of these groups um but i mean overall i don't think like we're gonna get any like game breaking stuff from this guy yeah i, I believe i'm sure he he will 
he could probably tell us something about Talos, I'm sure about that. So. Do we think he could give us useful information about the Sky Castle? Like, do we know how to get there, even? Oh, and by the way, as a last-ditch attempt, if he doesn't tell us what he will and then... Well, he can still not it's... talk to us, right? Yeah, it's the exact same problem. Almost anything that you're questioning something, if it doesn't like you, you're not going to get information that's useful. Unless we have, like, a mind-control spell. Well, that's quite literally why I also said to Hark, make yourself look like Varum, and you might have a chance. Because, yeah, it's like mind reading is the only way to get past something. Um, and but... as far as the Sky Castle, it, it sounded like Talis had told us that she can get us into the Sky Castle for sure. Yeah, and Talis so said I'm she had entry. Had there I missed that part. Okay, that's Ta useful. Talis said she had entry, that she could get you all there. But... We could also use the draft to hopefully look more innocent when we enter the camp, the, the castle. You'll notice that Talus did not share any of the plans prior to when you guys could betray her. Yeah. And we'll draw <laughs> and tell us about it. Probably. You'll me. All right, so is there any particular information that we want to try to get out of this dwarf? I mean, do you think he would let us know where to find Resmir and stuff? Yeah, it's not a bad idea to ask. Maybe try to figure out, um, like, I don't even know, anything about, like, the dragon and how Resmir has control over the dragon. I, I definitely want to. I, I want to inquire uh, if he knows who Talos is working for before so I know which way he's siding with. And another thing could be that we could ask him if he knows something about when they pl plan to go into the war they, uh, the troll talked about, we'll see. And what war, actually. <laughs> I definitely think it's a good idea to try to figure out or try to ask him, Sarad, what Palace's motivation is. Because he was more likely to share stuff about his enemy, I think, than he is to like give us information about his friend. So maybe right. we can like convince him to tell us what Talus is up to. Because he thinks obviously we're against Talus and at least friendly to him. Right. Yeah. So we could at least inquire the information about Talos, that would be... <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty good, Teresa, what you typed. Okay. And then Josh, even if he's not recognizing you specifically as that dwarf or whatever, Maybe drop the act, but still be friendly towards him and try to be like, look, sorry for the deception. Like, you know, we're allies here to save you. Um, you know, they told us to take this form to reassure you or something like that. Like, I don't know. Sort of like try to regain some of his trust while he's still friendly and he got the zone of truth out. Is your new character a bard, Jamie? 
I mean, Josh. I'm trying to do a Jamie impression. <laughs> <laughs> Your volume went down again. I mean, I think <laughs> I'm trying to 200%. Oh, it's my fault. It's cat, not my microphone away from my face. <laughs> Accidentally let her into the room, and the first thing she did was to try and become one with my face. <laughs> uh, but no, he's, he's not. He's, uh, he's a sorcerer. We have a magic user. My gift hey, what are you? I'm British, Jamie. We've been over this. <laughs> it's not a weird voice. It didn't hit my head. No, I'm a sorcerer. A really goofy looking one. <laughs> He's literally called Hark the Goat. So is Teresa the only one who's taking a list of questions? Yeah, I'm going to sit out the questioning just because I did so poorly and like failed my zone of truth and whatnot, so. Oh, Verpus has got high charisma, so he can maybe ask one of them. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> you got it, then, Teresa? I mean, I, I, oh. I, can, I can try to ask them one of the questions if... Yeah, you should help. Well, I think you've got 10 minutes with Zone of Truth. You've got 55 with friends. Nice. I think it's one minute. No, friends is okay. definitely longer than that. Oh, oh, Zone of yeah, Truth. Yeah, I think it's like an hour. Uh, Zone of Truth is 10. Yeah, okay. Friends is one minute. Oh, shoot. Okay, we better start. Oh, yeah. That's not even going to last realistically, then. Well, yes, when, you, when you said you looked at me sideways... <laughs> sorry, one sec. <laughs> so when you said you looked at me sideways, um, I thought that's what you meant, because friends had ended. Yeah, I mean, regardless, I feel like that actual line of questioning that you all had would have been the end of friends as well. I could just cast it again. True. trip. <laughs> but he doesn't see me as a friend anymore, I imagine. Cast him, hater. You're ready, my friend, right? Well, actually, no, you don't know Hark yet. <laughs> so, does that change your thought on using Zone of Truth? If friendship has essentially already dropped, um, there's no. an extra level of hostility. Where... No, I think I think we can still try to talk to him. <laughs> I, 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 the problem, I believe, if he sees that you uh, cast Sound of Truth, wouldn't it be uh, deemed to him like we are not trusting him. Well, again, Zone of Truth is not something that convinces somebody to tell you the truth. It is a weird, compelling just... feeling to tell the truth, and they can literally shut the fuck up if they don't want to say what they're about to say. That's why, like, when Tynus would go to use it many times, it was just like, don't think it works how you think it works, because this person doesn't have a reason to tell you the truth. And, I don't know, I just, I don't think Zone of Truth is, A, this is how we know everything is on the kosher level. I, I believe Zone of Truth is uh, normally more useful when you try to figure out if someone is saying the truth. Like, uh, when he says, no, he wasn't, uh, he didn't do it. 
And if you do the sort of shoe, if you can ask him if you do, uh, did it, and if he does not answer, you know he did it. Something like that. But the problem with getting your information is that they just simply don't answer. Did we get this dwarf's name? Cragmore. Yeah, Cragmore. I thought you were. Oh. Varum is the the white. Got it. Talus and Varum both are technically the white. Okay. That's their title. Like Gandalf from Death. Yeah, is that what I was like? Definitely like Gandalf. Because Saruman was Talus and Varum is Gandalf. So before we start asking him questions, we know that Friends has ended? Yeah, I think his questioning before probably would have been most of that minute kind of passing by. Okay. Okay, then I maybe we wouldn't. Like, I never mm -hmm. stopped to think of that interaction on a second by second basis to have right. an idea of a minute, but I feel like that was a pretty solid minute of time passed by. Um, so depending on how I things thought Resmir flow, was a dragon. Resmir is a half dragon. And I guess he controls the bigger, the big dragon. You all have started to hear signs that some of the worm speakers can control dragons. But you don't, I don't believe any of you would have a reason to yet know how or where the power is coming from. Um, the dragon masks, I think you have now heard of the black mask as well as the white mask. Alice being the first to openly speak about it to you, and then I feel like Langdorosa might have mentioned the Black Mask. And I think it actually was in a reference to controlling uh, Vorathammer that Landerosa had mentioned Resmir using the Black Mask. I feel like it was in passing, maybe? Yeah, I can't remember exactly if it was like something we read in one of those books or whatever, but somewhere along the way you like informed us that that's what it was, was planning on using the mask. It was definitely in the search through the notes where you found the code word that you started to see in the notes that uh, Resmir was um, approaching being ready to use the Black Dragon Mask to try to take control of Vorathammer. Yep, that's it. So I might have still mentioned one with Lenderosa. I don't know for sure. Um, I feel like those two moments are the two times that you all have um, legitimately come across the dragon masks and them as like points of control over dragons. So. Are you ready to approach and ask your question, Sarad? Or did that actually change things? I mean, maybe I'll start off without Zone of Truth first, if I know that Friends is gone. Alrighty. Because I think that would be hostile. So also just make sure to take that slot back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so I think essentially Verthus has just freed the human male from his bondage. Uh, he's kind of groveled at Verthus's feet. Um, and more or less Cragmore is like looking at Tavarum with uh, like a little bit of trepidation. And the female seems to be standing uh, on her own two legs and kind of uh, gaining herself as Sarad heals her. And that's where we'll jump back in. So the, so Verum is still tied up? Uh, Hark is Varum. He's the one pretending to be the dwarf. Cragmore oh. is the other dwarf, but all the prisoners are freed at that point. Okay, that was the confusion. I have Varum the white and Cragmore the dwarf. So. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Oh, okay. But they're both dwarves. They are both dwarves. Okay. So I guess I'll walk over to where Hark and Cragmore are and say, Look, Cragmore, I'm sorry we got off on the wrong foot. We are not working for Talos. We can help you get out of here alive, but we would really appreciate it if you could help us out with a little information. Roll of persuasion. Oh. <laughs> Have you not defeated Talus? Is she being this place? She's actually upstairs, waiting for us to report back to her. But as she said to us, we are not her allies. So she's using us to get information out of you, but we figure we don't have to get the information she's looking for. We are indeed interested. Uh, we... But we could say it like uh, the enemy of our enemy is our friend. We are not <laughs> really a friend of Talos. Right. Whose enemy are you? Talos. <laughs> and much, very more. But do, do, do you probably the the dragon of Talis? Do, do you know it? Well, I mean, we're still trying to figure out our place in this world. But can you tell us how you and Talis came to be on opposite sides? Beautiful scum, unworthy of her rank. She has been cast down. Looking back towards Hark, Varum is the rightful worm speaker. Varum is a staunch ally to Resmir. And how do you all know of the White Dragon? We know that Talus wants it, and we're not sure that we want her to have it. We are sure that we do not want her to have it. Okay. The weak always covet. Will you free me? Will you release me from this place? 
What can we get if we do? He, like, kind of stands up presenting his near-naked body. I have nothing to offer you. <laughs> uh, Doc's gonna say from the back, you yeah, have, uh, something. I mean, we are working our way up. Can you give us some, um, you know, letters of recommendation or something? Into the cult. Yeah, we just, you know, bested the the Trepsin guy outside. I could perhaps where do you wish to go? Where do you wish to gain entry? I want to oh I, I want to watch you as a soldier in the in the sky castle. Would be my dream. Or oh, a cook, but I believe I'm too bad as a cook. <laughs> Don't hire him as a cook. I could perchance smuggle you from Parnast into the Sky Castle. Smuggle. I mean, I can't speak for all of us, but I myself, I'm interested in Resmir. I want to understand how a worm speaker controls dragons and harnesses all that power for himself. I have nearly no access to Resmir. Serve the white. artifacts themselves I doubt you will ever be able to understand them would it be possible for us to get some kind of audience with the white it's for me to turn on my lord all but said that you are my enemy what do you mean? No, Verum the White. I thought you said... Yes, Verum is my lord. You yeah, I... misunderstood. I, I just would have... Uh, you, 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 you misunderstood the enemy part, I believe. I, I told you, we, the enemy of our enemy is... Our uh, friend. <laughs> and I believe that you are an enemy of Talos. We are also an enemy of Talos. Make a deception check. The speaker you like grabs his forehead and he's just like bent over why do you wish to speak with Verum? to to learn I I I need to know why why she's fighting with uh with Talos at least. What do you wish to learn of the whites? I want to understand more about dragons. 
I mean, how did you first get into this group? I have served for many years of my life, given up much what has made me me to serve the glory of dragons. What would you give to serve your queen? I can host really good branding parties. I mean, I've converted a lot of people that way. I feel like we could get a lot of followers. Those are the kinds of skills I have. Control their minds? Take their souls? I wouldn't go that far, but I would say that, like, I, I make it so that they want to do what I'm asking them to do. Uh, another thing, I, I think everyone here around us, uh, we are really good at fighting, and uh, Talus told us that you guys plan to go to a war. Yeah, look at this lady. I'm gonna pull Vicious in and like hold up her arm. Hi. How many thousands do you think you could sacrifice to Tiamat? How many can you bring into the fold? Uh. I mean... You mean, if it's a single person? I would believe. Depending on the time. But we could try to starve some to death. <laughs> First time. And, and at least. Not, I, I, I don't believe I can bring a, a thousand, but I can at least bring a hundred. I have definitely hosted parties with a thousand. But you, you're saying you can get us into the Sky Castle? Perhaps this is not our territory, but I know the way in. I can bring you there for my freedom, and perhaps from there we can discuss your sacrifice. I'm going to sidebar with my current cohort and see what they think. <laughs> sidebar? <laughs> Guys. <laughs> okay. I feel like I feel like he's not telling us much more or I'm not asking yeah. the right questions. He definitely also switched off of asking about other people and started asking about Pharaoh, which is one of the things you said you were not going to do. Mm. Well, I'm not sure that we're getting any answers uh, that are useful. And the truth is, it sounds like his office the same as hers was. Right. So yeah. we're questioning our allegiance. Perhaps that's the real question is, what do we lie with one or the other? Everybody would hear as you're sidebarring this person like tripping over the chains as they're walking towards the door. I'll like uh, shoot an arrow right in front of his foot as he's like taking a step. <laughs> so, uh, I, I have another. I mean, I, I feel like with uh, Doc shooting the arrow, <laughs> it's not like seems like we are friends anymore. <laughs> so, I'm a, okay. 
stop the talking with questioning, but you, you do not tell him anything? And take <laughs> pull out my quarter stuff and hold it under his uh film and gonna could you could you tell us more about this artifact you were talking about earlier? Controlling dragons sounds fun. None of you seem to love dragons like real cultists. You seem to wear those robes abhorrent as much as anything else or a disgrace to Tiamat, and she will burn you. Yeah, if you if you trap me, I will punch you with my stick. Shut up! Just don't say such thing, man. No, he's are very confused. <laughs> like, what did you just say, Adar? <laughs> it, is, it is just like <laughs> annoyed. <laughs> he checks his languages. Uh, nope, it's not on there. Whatever that was. I swear, you got more German this week, by the way, Jan. Yeah. Well, Shayla just wants to shut up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was shut up. <laughs> what like color are the cultist robes? Yeah, it was a trap. But <laughs> if you threaten me, I'm gonna punch you with my stick. <laughs> to stop it and shut up. <laughs> uh, just like black robes. Well, I'm gonna just keep my bow trained at uh, him and make sure he doesn't go anywhere. He's like doing that stupid ass shrugged shoulder look. Like, you guys looked away? I was. Let me go, please? I'll get you into the castle and we can. Yeah, what Varum... you gonna do here? Sell us F? Varum, do you have a favorite food? Is that a question of Cragmore? Oh, I'm sorry. Cragmore, do you have a favorite food? Um, why? <laughs> you know, last meal requests, that kind of thing. Really, like escargot? Are you familiar? Oh, yeah. Quite difficult to find in these parts. You might have to look for them for quite a long month or so. I know. The butter is a problem also. Favorite color? Let me guess. White? It is indeed white. <laughs> All right, I don't believe that, that they give us a better effort to enter the castle then tell us before so i don't think we have a reason there they are just wasting our time we're not as we uh, they believe that we what are we want to kiss the food so they give us something it's if true they don't, if they don't have us, uh, offer a decent deal they won't get out of here they can stay in prison forever Cragmore yeah. puts his hand up and waves it left to right in front of doc's eyes and then starts to walk up the stairs. Did he cast a spell? <laughs> no, no. He's okay. just doing a Jedi mind trick of, like, wiping across his eyes, like, from afar, and then walking away. Oh, yeah, happy uh, May the 4th. Yeah. Doc's gonna look over at Virthus and, uh, like, give him, like, the eyes, um, did we kill him? It's breaking out into a full run. I'm gonna run behind him. <laughs> Alright, I'm shooting him. He's shooting him. Then if, if, if I see Doc shooting him, I'm gonna stay. And gonna look. I'm gonna help my quarter stuff under the... Still hope my uh, quarter stuff on those chin. Going for a fatal shot, Doc? Or are you just wounding him? 
Yeah, going for a fatal shot. Alright, you can put him down. That guy. And have him running out of here makes us look weak. So, are you now ready to speak? Or let us uh, or offer us a, a better deal than before? It's not our fault. Uh, we didn't quite get as much information as maybe we could have, but we're no, no worse off for it. And now we have a little more understanding, at least of the motives and sort of the separation <laughs> of the clans. So I think we stick with our deal and uh, proceed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, outside of game, like we kind of tried both angles, like the good guy, bad guy, got a little bit more information. Doesn't seem, in my opinion, like compelling one way or the other. Like, they're both dragon cults. They're just having a tiff. So yeah. It's like, do we care which side we're on? Not really. Might as well stick with the, the original side, I think. Yeah. She, I mean, go ahead. Oh, I was trying to get us, like, in with one side, but if that's not happening, then, yeah, he was useless to us. I, I felt like he, even if he would have helped up in. I feel like he's not, um, yeah, he still doesn't trust you, so <laughs> it would have ended like he's helping us in and just selling us off. <laughs> what kind of in were you thinking, Teresa? I don't know, like level two rank or something. Oh, yeah. You definitely have a long way of proving yourselves to become cultists. I thought because we came in wearing the outfit, he would have been like, well, you're already initiate, so... <laughs> and you're rescuing me. But it's all good. See, I feel like that would have been the best case scenario if things went good, but yeah. you know, with the roles and whatnot and our lack of sort of like collaboration i guess um but yeah i mean that sounds that sounds pretty good to me i think we basically learned something we had an arc that we could have went on and we stuck with the one we were on i think it's the first time we've ever stuck to a plan so let's see that as well, <laughs> well if we would have if we would have played that really good and got like snuck in behind enemy lines and like indoctrin indoctrinated into the cult it'd be one thing yeah but he was basically just offering to sneak us in which which she already told us she could sneak us in. So right, it's right. like, I, I don't know. I think we kind of missed that opportunity, but we're good. Yeah. Yeah. So what hey is going to do is like, you, you guys better get back into yourselves if you don't want to tell us something. He's literally hey. dead. <laughs> Wait, yeah, who I love the idea, though, that Hadar is still talking to him, like talking trash. <laughs> yeah, who are you shit-talking here right now, Hadar? The dead body? Or, oh, no. or the dead. other two? I think it was the other two. Wait, you're not going to free me? I thought... I don't even know these people. I came to deliver my goods, and they... Can I please just go? I saw nothing. I don't know what you look like. Uh, yeah, no, uh, you're good. Hey, Dar hey Dar's just confused. Uh, what, what good? I'm not sure. Uh, I have nothing. They took everything from me. She's like standing in front of you with next to nothing on her person. And she's Aww. like just holding yeah. her hands up. I have nothing. I can't give you anything. I put my robe on her, and I say, yeah. you're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I believe everybody in this situation would say the same thing, so I'm not going to. Because should we really trust you? Or him or her? <laughs> she looks at Sarad. Can you please walk me out into safety? Just show me where to go, and you will never see me again. I will not bother you. Make a stand in the zone of truth. We never cast it. I believe uh, her. 
Hey, should I believe yeah. her? Um, I'm going to check. check. Oh dear. Uh, she seems trustworthy. She seems completely afraid. She seems uh, like shaken and kind of beaten by this whole like situation. But she's definitely grateful you've clearly healed her and you've given her at least a little bit of like that first feeling of uh, safety again. Like just having like the robe to kind of like huddle up in. It, it's a lot mentally. Yeah. You know, no worries. I'm going to help her out. Uh, Sarah, so, so just one question. You sure that uh, Talos is just going to let her go? I'm just a priest. I mean, is she watching us? Can, can I go too? <gasps> You're a priest? So am I, sort of. Yes, just yeah. on, on pilgrimage. I was never meant to be here. I'm not sure why I've been kept here, but I just want to return. I... Wait, what are you a priest for? He's like, the uh, dragon cult. <laughs> a mentor? For whom? Who's your god? Um, um, oh, I said it wrong the first time. A monitor? Oh! Yeah, you're good. Y yes, I, I agree. You guys, let's just let these two guys go, yeah? I don't know her, but I, we, if we can go, that would be really, really great. <laughs> these people are just dust in the wind. Uh, I would, oh want... I would want to sort of, like, wave them off, and then I think um, I'll probably like go upstairs to see if uh, um, Talus is still around and Tripson's like just running around in the house wrecking shit or what. Uh, I would want to ask if I can. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead first. Sorry. Wait, you want to ask if you can, and then I didn't hear it. Yeah, if I can uh, incite the the man. The yeah, priest. You, you can insight check him. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're pretty sure across like many planes of existence that this guy was purely wrong place, wrong time. And then I'm gonna. Uh, okay, guys, so uh, let, let's make a deal. We'll, we'll help you go, and the next time you see me, you give me a big portion of food. I assure you, I never saw you the first time. Wait. Yeah, I don't care how many times you saw me, but just the next time. I never looked at your face. I don't know what you look like. Yes, I will go. Just free me, please. Hey, hey that's gonna sick. <sighs> All right. Please don't hurt me. You'll be fine. I take Hadar's cloak, I turn it inside out, and put it on the priest, and I help them both out. Hadar's not gonna let her take this cloak. What? Why are you turning it inside out? I feel like we just met a very new, cruel side of Hadar. I know. <laughs> Hadar, you don't need this. We don't want this, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I felt like my, my meal before it was some, something bad and I stomach choosing. <laughs> so, I think with Doc moving upstairs, Sarad is likely to escort the other two out to the back uh, and off mm -hmm. <laughs> as you like push them off and they start running towards the west 
towards the tree cover, you see as this massive winged creature that seems... Ooh, it's going to look different for you. So, Sarad, you are going to see a deer with massive antlers and wings at almost like a 25, 20 foot wingspan swoop down and in an instant it's going to pick up uh brother Cos Cosmo Cosmo oh his name was Cosmo Cayman okay uh it's gonna pick up brother Cayman tear off his head and just immediately drop his body as it flies off of his head in his hand in its hands what the heck and it returns to the roof above you uh, you will see as uh, Myrcella screams, but continues to run off into the west. You know, a delivery person, like Grubhub or something. And then the other one was trying to do sales and came up to the front door. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Sarad, can you do a. Uh, Sarad, can you do a. Uh, uh, oh, you were check? the other person who was up there. I think you would be more likely to be among them. When you said it looks different, why did you... I, I missed why did it look different, you said? Uh, do a nature check for me. From Doc. Um, you may not quite pick up on the subtleties of this, but you would see a young female very much in the nude with very long eagle-like wings protruding from her back who would have swooped down on Brother Cayman, torn off his head, and uh, flew back to the roof. Okay, I would look back at the group and say, it's the illusionary ones again. The ones from the bridge before we fought the trolls. And as we look around, do we see any of, um, like, Tripson or Talus or their crew or anything? Um, initially looking around, you would be inside of the kitchen. Um, some things would be, like, damaged in here from Trepson having come through, um, but you don't actually hear any more signs of Trepson. Uh, there are a few kobolds who are kind of, like, peeking out from behind different little things and kind of, like, looking at you, uh, but most of them are kind of getting back to sort of keeping things in motion in the house. Uh, all right, I guess I will like sort of like poke outside and train my bow on that creature uh, and just try to like convince everybody or like like remind everybody what they were. I think that was before we actually fought with um Sarad and Berthus. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, they're definitely, you must, definitely different. You must remember uh, the creatures we encountered before. I guess really now it's just who Vicious and Hadar. The, the hoppy things or whatever from the, the bridge when we got ambushed. I, I believe I would go upstairs at some point too to join them. Uh, you, you mean the harpies from the, uh, from the, from our, uh, yeah, road trip? Yeah, that's right. When we fought those uh, trolls, got in the bridge. Uh, yeah, what, what, what about them? Where, where are the... Uh, did you see the people off? Did everything go... Well? Uh, one of those creatures literally just flew out of the sky and tore the priest in two. Well... That's I'm, bad I'm looking you. at it. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. I have it trained in my bow. I mean, I, I'm assuming it's a hostile. Did I pull the trigger? Don't do it, Doc. I believe it's uh, one of Tardis' uh, minions. 
Tallis, I mean. I believe we should go to, to Tallis and then inquire about how we should could get into the castle with the help of hers. Yeah, I don't see her anywhere. Uh, we sort of like didn't make arrangements for how this plan was going to play out and uh, went downstairs. So I'm, I'm assuming she was going to find us afterwards and see if we found anything out. I don't think she would like stick this strange beast on us. Uh, is it just like sitting on top of the roof? Yeah, so like more or less, you would have seen it swoop down and have lost sight of it. If you leave the house to go gain sight of it, you can probably look for it and probably see it. But like at present, without just with what it was, you basically watched it murder the priest. But like you were yeah, still so actively I would definitely in the like house. Try to... Okay, I would definitely just try to explain myself to them and then run outside and try to see it. Because, like, you know, I'm assuming this thing's a hostile if it just killed the people that we set free, like, without any question. Yeah, I'm just still staring off at where this person was murdered in shock. kind of unfair to say murder when somebody else does the killing you know because like we're on the right side or whatever it's not really like bad murder it's like it's murder it's like the like start of the treatise in defense of murder hobos yeah that's funny so bad murder good murder it would hate would want to try because he's someone really knows. Uh, is is there any eye up here? Uh we need to talk to Talis and he's gonna try to shout real like really loud. <laughs> so assuming then Sarad is watching Doc stepping out of the house to gain a sight on one of these flying creatures. Hadar is running up the stairs yelling for Talus. And the other three... Yeah. I would definitely be like... Making a commotion and yelling like we're under attack also, just to make sure everyone is alert to the situation. Are we actually under attack? I thought the thing was on the roof. And it let one person go, so I thought it had something specific against Amantor or whatever. Let me have a uh, doc roll initiative at present, I think. I go for under attack. I don't know. Semantics? I don't think I specifically saw more than one of them, did I? You just said, like, the girl started getting away into the trees? Yeah, you saw one swoop down on the mail. Yeah, and I thought the the woman got away. Yep. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know if it was, like, fast enough that it... Like, if there was more of them, we could have known, possibly, if they were only after one. But I literally only saw one, and it just happened, maybe, to kill the dude. Like, maybe I it could have just so happened to pick her. It was, like, 50-50. Yeah, that's a, that's a Teresa thing. <laughs> just, just assuming that um, it was a targeted thing and not just a random murder. 
Well, like, we definitely discovered that there was something weird going on because Vicious saw them differently than we did. Because she's female, apparently, like, there's some sort of illusion. Oh, I feel like I did it wrong, too. I feel like they tear your heart out, not your head. But I like tearing your head off, too. Okay. We can retcon that. <laughs> yeah, without actually, like, bringing out the monster manual to look up this creature, I'm pretty sure they tear the heart out of men. Uh, oh, out of men. What was that? I was like, oh, out of men, so the girls are okay. <laughs> yep, that's why you see them as the creature that they are, whereas the guys will see them as a naked female. Um, yeah, so Doc can target in on this creature. Um, it is up on top of the roof. Uh, before you do anything, I'm going to add a spear already died to hit on that one. It's going to hit. All right, I'm going to shoot one more. That also will hit. Nice. And then I'm going to action surge and shoot it again. And then I'm going to add a uh, D8 damage to that. Nice. And then I'm going to, like, sort of sneer because I didn't kill it, and then I'm going to shoot it again. <laughs> How many actions is that? A one? And I'm going to use a luck to make uh, one more attack with that one. Uh, and then I'm going to add a D8 to that one. 16? Will a 16 hit? Isn't it technically a 20? Isn't your sharpshooter still a plus 4? Yeah, it's all built into there, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, it it's be, not yeah, built it into the 11, though. Yeah. yeah. That's that no, definitely you're right, you're right. <laughs> How do you but kill this die. creature? Oh, nice. Okay. So I just basically, like, riddle it with arrows, like, faster than you've ever seen Doc move. He just shoots like four arrows into this thing and just like one in each part of its main chesticle area. To Sarad or Vicious, were they to look out there, they would see it pierce through like the chest of an eagle. Um, and then, yeah, it's not even going to fall from the roof. Um, it's just going to fall dead on top of the roof, pierced through with arrows. Careful, there could be more. I'm not sure. And then I'm going to sort of like peep out and again, make sure to get everybody's attention. After a few moments, Talus is going to approach from up above and kind of call down. Is everything going well? Have you completed your mission? And then walk down the stairs. Uh, I'd say about as well as it could have. Uh, don't suppose that was one of yours and uh, look like up at the roof. What are you doing? We spoke with your dwarf and uh, didn't reveal any useful information, so we disposed of him as we discussed. 
Good, good. I'm assuming at this point in time, like, everybody's come outside? Yeah, I usually think inaction counts as they funnel forward. Yeah, I'm just still staring stunned, but this time I'm stunned at Doc. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, I'm just going to recap like what we talked to the... Basically, what we discussed as our final statements. Uh, just sort of that we didn't find anything else out in particular about the masks or anything. Um, but that essentially we're looking to get entry to the castle. Alice is like looking around at why you have your bow drawn. And she eventually spots the corpse of the man. What are you shooting at? Uh, let go of those uh, slaves from downstairs uh, before we killed the dwarf. And uh, as one of them was running off, that thing swooped down from the sky and tore his head off or his heart out. There's a little question about exactly what happened. But there was a bunch of blood and some penetration. Ray, don't murder my creatures while you are a guest. Oh, I, I apologize. I, I did say, was that one of yours? You don't remember that? Yes. I do remember that. Uh, well, part of our plan was to just let those two random people go, and I didn't expect a beast to fly down from the sky and murder one, so caught me off guard there. Well, he should have been a little bit more careful in where he ran. No harm, no foul. Be nice to get rid of you all, as cantankerous guests as you may be. Perhaps the time to say goodbye is nigh. And where is your robe? Uh, looking over at Sarad. Well, I gave it to the lady as part of our ploy to get the dwarf to trust us, and it sort of didn't work. We will fetch you a new robe presently. Thank you. And she's like rubbing her, her the temple of her forehead. Uh, she is going to kind of wave Doc back inside, uh, bringing you all back into the sitting room. There's the food is cleared from the table and there is a lance laying across the table with a uh, wrapped purple, like, uh, um, flag kind of hanging from it. So it's essentially, like, wrapped around the length of the lance at present. Uh, she takes a few moments, gets another robe, uh, for Talus. Or wait, no, my bad. Another robe for Sarad. And then gives a robe to Hark. Uh, she's going to go over a few of the different uh, commands and kind of passcodes that you will have as you enter the uh, the Flying Castle. Um, basically, she's going to kind of instruct you all on the basics of flying a wyvern. Um, the idea being to kind of uh, start at it a little gently. And then uh, progressing forward with uh, your movement once it kind of starts to gain familiarity with you. Um, you're going to get the different uh, Tiamat signs of the pointed ears, or like the pointed, uh, like two fingers that kind of um, represent the. Oh, wait, no, it's pointed five fingers that represent the five heads of Tiamat. Uh, she goes over uh, a few of the other codes of. Tiamat, our mother, our strength, is one of the kind of passcodes to gain entry. 